Hi, welcome to today's lesson on farrowing house cleaning and sanitation. My name is Dr. Andrea Pitkin. I'm with PIC here on behalf of Neogen to talk with Dr. Terry Speck about their farrowing house cleaning and sanitation protocols. It's always great to have an extra set of eyes and today that's me, so let's go get started. Hey, Dr. Terry, how are you today? Good, Dr. Pickin, how are you? Great, thanks for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited that we're here today to look at disinfecting processes. Yeah, perfect, let's go see what you got. Step one. First, we need to evaluate the personal protective equipment compliance. Lead the way. So as you know, Dr. Terry, personal protective equipment is super important for the safety of the workers when they're cleaning and disinfecting. So what protocols do you guys utilize here? Today with us we have Anna and she has our protocol of what we recommend for PPE. And that includes the rain waterproof pants and the waterproof coat with a hood. And then additionally earplugs that she would put in, her mask, goggles, and then lastly would be some of the chemically resistant gloves and steel-toed boots. Most people at farms realize the amount of time and effort it takes for power washing, and it's not always the funnest job on the farm, but I always reiterate the importance of it because that really helps the health of the pigs moving forward, so that really helps the team understand why we do that and why we implement these procedures. Step two, we need to make sure we are using the proper concentration of our cleaner. So cleaning, as you know, is super important because we have to prep that surface for the disinfectant and cleaning is our most effective way to make sure we're getting all that organic material and, and descaling and properly cleaning off those surfaces. As I tell many of the team members, uh, you can't disinfect poop and you can't clean poop. So we have to be able to get in there, get a product, a cleaner that really degreases and descales that off and get that clean layer. And that way it'll allow the disinfectant to work. Absolutely. So today we're going to be using a product called Barnstorm. Barnstorm is an acidic degreaser and descaler. We're going to be using it at a concentration of two ounces per gallon. The reason why we chose this concentration is especially for the heavy organic material that's going to be found in our sow units. So how this product works is you put your concentrated product, the here, the barnstorm cleaner, into the reservoir. And then what we need to make sure we're doing is putting in the proper tip that comes with the product so we pull it out at the right dilution. We've got all these tips here. All of these tips were calibrated using water, which is a pretty thin liquid versus Barnstorm is a little bit more thicker, what we say more viscous. So we need to make sure with that we're using the right tip that's going to draw out two ounces per gallon for this product. So it's always good to double check with the manufacturer and make sure you get a better understanding of, of how that's better accomplished using these uh, devices. So in this case, we're going to use this green tip. That will help us draw out for the thickness of this solution, two ounces per gallon. Make sure you get the tip fully inserted into the lid. You'll then take the draw off hose, put it over the tip, attach it here to the reservoir. Then you have this hose piece attachment that has a snap tap. Let's put that onto here and then your hose goes on here. And then all you need to do is hold engage the uh, nozzle. There is a, a holder here so that they can spray pretty easily and apply the disinfectant or the cleaner. Another common mistake that I see is when we're using hydrofoamers, we need to make sure we're using a different hydrofoam reservoir for our different products, whether we're using two different types of cleaners or especially if we're using a different uh, disinfectant. Main reason being is again, these tips are going to be designated for cleaner type, disinfectant type, and concentration. So one thing that I highly recommend doing is labeling your hydroformers. Here we're going to put a C on this one so we know it's for the cleaner. You're all set. Step three. We're going to go inspect the room when Anna's done cleaning. Hi, 
How's it going? Doing great, Dr. Andrea. How are you? Good. Well, everything looks really good so far. You're doing a great job. One piece of advice I have for you is really getting a good layer of uh, cleaner up on this feeder. Sure. Uh, particularly, you've done good up here, but down here underneath, I uh, want to make sure you're getting some more cleaner down there to make sure we're getting the whole feeder done. What do you think, Dr. Terry? Yeah, I agree. You're doing an excellent job up here, just kind of focus the area down below, which is a harder area to get. But other than that, you're doing excellent. Thank you. All right, I'll focus on those smaller details. So we should let this cleaner soak for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then Anna can get started power washing. Okay, good. Step four will be to inspect the room after power washing. All right, how'd it go, Anna? It went really well after we applied the detergent. It really cut through the grease a lot better. Good, good. So we're just gonna use a flashlight. It helps highlight areas around the stall that we can see a little bit better. We'll take a peek. Sounds great. A uh, couple of touch-up spots, as you can see down here on the waterer, uh, getting around those bolts and on the edges. There's still some manure down there in the slats on the stall floor. Um, you've got a little spray here on the side walls and things, but once you do your final rinse, that should uh, uh, go down into the pit and everything looks pretty good. So now that we're ready to disinfect, step five is making sure we're using the proper concentration of our disinfectant. So today we're going to be using Synergize to disinfect the room. Synergize can be applied in two different concentrations, either a half ounce per gallon or an ounce per gallon. So what's your normal protocol here at the farm? Right now our normal protocol for this farm is one ounce per gallon. We had a little bit of increase in scours and we're doing better with that, but we still want to keep it at one ounce per gallon. All right. So to properly set up our hydrofoamer, for one ounce per gallon, we need to use the aqua tip. If you ever want to go back to a half ounce per gallon, you would use the purple tip then instead. So a second method we can use for proper cleaner and disinfectant concentration is using measuring cups or buckets to ensure we're getting the proper stock solution. They have buckets that show your amount of gallons on the side. And then what is really handy are these cups to show ounces. Now I totally understand that things like this might not be readily available on a farm. So a trick that you can use is actually taking a syringe to measure out your disinfectant. So 30 cc's is the equivalent to an ounce. So you would just use a syringe then to put your disinfectant or cleaner into your stock bucket, however you've created it. One more way to test to make sure you've got the right concentration of Synergize coming out of the power washer is to use a pH meter and you should see it right around seven. about knowing your pathogens and how important it is to match your disinfectant program to the pathogens that you have currently on the farm. Uh, it's important to understand alkalinity or basic versus acidic disinfectants and cleaners because those are going to have more effective or faster kill times depending on the pathogen that you have of concern. All right, Anna, looks like you did a great job getting disinfectant down on the stall. So as a follow-up to our conversation on ensuring we have the proper concentration, we can you pour a little bit of that in here so we can check it with the pH meter? Absolutely. Let's check it out. All right, 7.1. Great job, Anna, getting the proper concentration. Step six, assess the room after the disinfection process. Regardless of any disinfectant that you use, drawing is a key part of breaking down viruses and bacteria. They don't like to be dried out, so that disrupts their envelopes, outer membranes, and gives you a more complete kill when you dry things out. If you leave the stalls wet and those piglets are born into a cold, moist environment, obviously that's not ideal for them. 
we want them up to the udder right away, nursing colostrum, and when they're wet and cold, that process is gonna be delayed and just takes that much longer to get them started. We want the pig's first drink to be colostrum from its mom, not water or residual disinfectant left in the stall. When you do your inspection process and looking around, you know, look for things like this. Even little bits of feed, little bits of manure left behind can leave enough viruses and bacteria in the environment, especially to get the piglets sick. Trying to start out with a clean environment so we don't ingest or the piglets don't ingest anything before they get started. So now that this room has had a chance to dry, everything looks great. This is gonna be perfect for the sows to come in the stall and again, have that nice dry environment for the pigs. They won't get chilled, they won't have any residuals left over because the disinfectant has had a chance to aerosolize. So this is a great setup for those sows to come in and farrow into a nice clean barn. Yeah, I think one thing though, um, if we can do anything better is maybe some of those feeders still have the water in there. So if we can somehow get that blown out of there um, and with a leaf blower just to get that extra drying of the feeder so we don't have that. All right, well thanks for having me today, Dr. Terry. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming, Dr. Andrea, and all the help that you gave us insight on the cleaning and disinfecting, and we'll be sure to have you back some other time and see what other areas we can look at. Yeah, absolutely, happy to come back anytime. Thank you. See you later.